What's up, Thrashers, and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel, and I am back with yet another album review, and this week, I was expecting to do this one yesterday, but some um, things got switched up, so I'm reviewing it today. I am talking about the latest offering from Power Wolf, Wake Up the Wicked. Also came out on July 26th on Napalm Records. I don't know how many albums this makes it for this band, but this is a German power metal band, and to be honest, I've heard a lot of hype behind this band, but I've not checked out anything they've done until now. And, well, you're gonna find out if I kinda got the hype or not. But yeah, when I was looking at bands they were being compared to on like the Metal Archives, I saw like the big one being Sabaton. However, I would say this doesn't really sound like Sabaton at all. This sounds more like classic power metal to some degree. And you pretty much get those classic power metal tropes with the opening track, Bless Him With The Blade, which is the shortest track of the album at under two, not under two minutes, under three minutes. And it's basically classic power metal, like big heroic riffs and D-beat stomps. And of course the lead work on the entire album I will not complain about the lead work, other than the fact that maybe they can be a bit repetitive on certain songs, but there are a lot of songs where they'll add twin leads to kind of add more variety. So, not really much of a complaint of anything. I don't mind how these leads are being performed. I thought they were killer. Uh, but then we get into Sinners of the Seven Seas, and this song kind of goes for a little more of like a classic heavy metal gallop. And there's plenty of classic heavy metal moments on this album. Even some groove kind of comes up here every once in a while on this track. And then into Kyrie Kiltorum, or Kiltorum, uh... This song, yeah, definitely pushing more into the classic heavy metal realm, and dare I say, even some slight 80s synths kind of come up a little bit on this song, and the guitars start to come alive. I'll talk more about the production after I get through all these songs, but yeah, this track definitely kind of carries a little more of an 80s metal vibe, but with like the modern power metal sensibility to it. Now, Heretic Hunters, this was one of the big standouts on the album for me because it's basically a big giant triplet swing, very much in the vein of, you know, Black Sabbath, Accept, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, like classic heavy metal triplet swinging with a cool melody, but some heavier riffs, like more chunkified riffs, which after hearing some of these classic metal or modern power metal riffs it was nice to hear something a little bit different and that was going for the more heavier approach and then 1589 the track that follows which is actually the longest track of the album which is a little over four minutes so it's not really a long song at all more dark like this song sounds slightly more dark with a piano opening and the guitars get a little bit more dark and sinister sounding some cool lead work on this track in particular like a shredding lead and then a rather shall i say sultry lead and even some like galloping d beats come up on this track as well and then viva volgata we're back to like classic heavy metal on here and even some double time like we're adding a little bit little bit more tempo variety on this album with this track having some double time on it then to the title track, this one, I would dare say at times, kind of bordered on thrash because you get this like wild galloping rhythm and riff that to me almost reminded me of Children of Bodom to a degree. And then there's some like big chugs and twin lead work once again. And then into Joan of Arc, again, back to 80s metal chops, but bigger riffs, gallops, and definitely felt like 80s priest a little bit. Um, and again, some killer lead work, and then Thunder Priest, bombastic melody and harmony all throughout, and then, out of nowhere, high tremolos and blast beats. Not really like black metal per se, but like high melodic tremolo guitars on top of blast beats. Then to the track, We Don't Want to Be Saints. This one definitely kind of perhaps felt the most 
poppy out of the album because you know you have a child choir for the chorus but you get like more heroic riffs and melodies and lead work but then you get into the final track of the album uh vargamore which was a smidgen under four minutes of the second longest track of the album kind of at times felt more like a folk metal song like almost like you're listening to a uh sea shanty or something from like Lord of the Rings to an, to a degree with like the acoustic guitars and the other folky instruments I couldn't quite pick out what was what more triplet swings come in and again back to some heavier chunky riffs and twin lead work so it was a kind of a great way to end this album now probably the biggest complaint that I had about this album isn't really so much musically like i thought musically this was pretty damn good for a power metal album and i can kind of get the hype behind power wolf now like these guys know how to write catchy riffs catchy songs but still have a little bit of aggression to them despite you know the bombastic nature of it however the biggest issue i had with this album would be in the production like especially in the first few songs of the album I kind of was turned off by the overproduced drums, like the drums kind of sound overproduced. And it kind of does across the board, but after like three or four songs, I got used to it. So it's not too much for me, even though I would have loved to have heard the drums sound more natural. But the real big issue was, especially in the first few songs, the guitars kind of got buried by all the other stuff so it's like at times this album feels overproduced yet underproduced and it does make for a bit of an inconsistent album when it comes down to the production but as the songs go on the guitars do get a little more prominent gradually as the album goes on which was good because i want to be able to hear the guitars and in the beginning i just didn't quite get it like especially in centers of the seven seas like the guitar sounded really quiet on that song and even the lead sounded barely audible so really that's the big thing holding this album back is the overproduced drums and the underproduced guitars on a few of these songs so when i balance out the pros and cons i am going to give this a three out of five I still think it's a pretty good album, even though like I'm not the world's biggest power metal fan, I can enjoy it when it's not super cheesy or way too over the top. This album does kind of rub that line a little bit, but it still maintains a heavy metal attitude to it, and that's the thing I appreciate the most about it. But of course, those are just my opinions. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Keep your horns high and your dreams wet. Thank you for your patronage.